All right, we are on the second floor of the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. We are in the main hallway and I'm gonna take you into the birthing wing so you can see an example of where we stay. So this is the A4 birthing wing. This is the main kind of lobby area for it. We're gonna go through that center door here in just a second, but a lot of people always wonder, what are the bathrooms like? Cause it is communal living. It's like a dorm living. So let's start out. I'll take you in the men's room. I just checked it out. There's nobody in here. So I can just give you a quick tour. Um, we have these cubbies that you can store toiletries in. Again, we are in winter mode right now. So there's only 43 of us here in the station. So in the summer, these cubbies are going to be completely jammed full. On your left, you have the sinks and the mirrors. And uh, there's uh, usually each bathroom has three sinks. Uh, this is the men's room. So we will swivel around and uh, you can see this is the main uh, toilet facilities, a couple sit downs. You have privacy, it's plenty, it's all that you need. And then this particular bathroom has two showers. Uh, let's see here if I can turn this light on. Oops, didn't get it. There we go. Um, so you've got a little changing area that you can uh, pull the curtain through and then there's just a, a standard type of shower like you would have um, the fiberglass around. Um, all of them have these water saver heads on it. A little thing, I don't know if you knew this, but at the South Pole Station you're only allowed two two-minute showers a week. Um, and that is because we have to conserve our water very, very carefully. Um, there's a place there you can hang towels. And again, we're just back into the main area. There I am. <laughs> Um, yeah, so you get two two-minute showers a week, <laughs> unless, here's a nice little perk, if you work in the galley and you're with food safety and everything needs to be clean, then you actually get a shower every single day. And so because I work in the galley, yay, I get a shower. All right, so ladies, I'll give you a quick tour of yours. I just checked this as well and there was nobody in here. Same, similar setup. You've got cubbies for everything. On the right, you have your uh, sinks, mirrors, same type of setup. You've got uh, private facilities. Everything is, is well laid out. Showers, same scenario. So pretty much the same. All right, then we will leave here and we'll head into the birthing wing itself so you can kind of get a feel for what that is like. So here's our main entrance. And then there are always two hallways. Um, I, I found myself starting to whisper because you have to be really quiet in the birthing wings. Now this birthing wing is not, there's no one in here right now, so we can talk out loud. Um, but if the, like in the winter, we're all basically over an A1. Um, this is the A4 birthing. And you'll see, uh, get, come down the hall. Let's see if we can turn it here. Um, so on our left, these are interior rooms. They have no window. And on our right are the rooms that have an exterior wall. You have a thin, skinny little window, but at least you have a window. And uh, so this is what it looks like. Again, both, both sides pretty much the same. This is our skua for winter on the left there. But that is an example of a birthing wing. Now, I will give you a separate tour of my room so you can see how a standard room is set up. But um, we just passed skua. I don't know if you know what skua is. Skua is a scavenger bird, and that's also the name of our, basically our thrift store. Everything is free. So you can um, come in here, you can donate stuff. Um, we've got regular shirts and stuff, pants, shoes, everything. It's just kind of a cool little spot. All right, so that is an example of a birthing wing. We'll head back out into the main station so you can just see how it's all laid out. So you would come out of the birthing wing and this one happens to be on the very center of the um, second floor. And so you can see all the way down that end. This is the wall of fame we talked about where all the group portraits going all the way back to 1957 of people who have wintered over at the pole. And there's the other end of the station, so you can just kind of get a feel for that.
We will head into the computer lab next.